This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Supertraining Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering a question from Josh Baxley off of Facebook, off the Supertraining uh, Gym fan page, which if you're not a member of, you need to subscribe to it. Um, Josh has a question about the bench press. He said that he always benches with his fingers approximately 1.5 inches inside the rings. Um, so that's the little power ring where a lot of guys put their pinky on, where they put their index finger on for competition. Um, uh, and uh, he's saying that uh, he feels the strongest in that position, and he feels like he has no power off his chest, and he feels awkward out wide. He wants to know if he should continue on his path to work his strength or if he should try to attack his weakness um, and uh, develop more strength off the chest. Uh, I would say both. You know, you always hear people talking about working your weakness and working uh, working what you suck at and uh, you never hear people talking about working on your um, your strengths but uh, you do want to work on your strengths because your strengths are kind of what can separate you out from other people sometimes so um, you don't want to only focus on your weak points because if you only focus on your weak points you're not going to have enough overload to be efficient you're not going to have enough overload to get the stimulus that you need so let's just say, for example, you uh, can pull 500 pounds uh, off the floor, but uh, on a deficit, you can't even pull, uh, you can't pull anything more than like 315. Um, now that's a huge gap, and that's uh, pretty horrible that you can only pull 315 off the deficit, but do you think pulling 315 off a deficit or 325 is going to help you pull 550 and 525? It'll help you in the long run if you bring that weakness up but you also have to work on your strengths and you have to work on the things that you're more comfortable with and you have to work on the things that are actually going to give you confidence rather than make you feel like shit about yourself <laughs> if you do um if you do that deficit pull or for you if you do a super close grip or super wide grip bench press and you're only handling 185 pounds and your goal is to bench 350 I would say that it's not really going to help you a ton except for to help you mainly as an assistance movement. So I would keep rocking, you know, where you're strong. And uh, when you got max effort work to do and you want to handle something heavy, uh, I would use, it, use that uh, grip that you're talking about as a form of an overload. And I would use the other grip as a form of an underload. Um, so you could use it in a, in a week where you want to try to back off a little bit. Or you can simply use it as assistance work. Um, a good a good way of doing it is to um, use that uh, that wide grip as an assistance movement or a secondary barbell movement after a max effort movement or after some dynamic work. I, I would prefer to see you do it after your max effort work. So let's say you're doing a two board press, and let's just say we'll we'll use 315. Let's say you do a two board press with 315 with the grip that you're comfortable with. Well, now it's time to take that weight down a little bit. Let's go back down to about 225 and see if we can handle sets of six off the two board with that wider grip. So whatever you're choosing for the day, whether it's a floor press, board press, uh, whatever it is, or you can even take the boards out so you can develop a little bit more of that power. Um, but if you're training with bands or training with chains, just leave that shit on there and uh, switch that grip up, go with a wider grip, and go with uh, sets of sets of six, sets of eight, somewhere in that range so you can actually work on building your strength rather than just kind of testing it. Um, at Westside Barbell, they used to utilize an exercise uh, kind of called an illegally wide bench press, which is actually a good exercise, but uh, I always worried about clipping my hands in the rack. Um, for you, you say that even with your middle finger or your index finger on the on the rings, you suck. So you don't have to go illegally wide. Illegally wide is anything with anything further out than competition grip, which is your index finger on the power rings. Anything further than that is an illegal grip. Um, they used to do that at Westside Barbell for sets of six, um, uh, doing three sets and kind of uh, working their way towards a max set of six. So they kind of go light, medium, heavy on those. But uh, you know, mix it in whenever you can, mix it in however you can. Um, also, you might want to try to do um, uh, some of your bench pressing with your elbows out and really bring them up high. I know that's the exact opposite of what everybody says all the time, but um, again, it would be an assistance movement. It'd be something that you would do light. You'd use light weights for that. Um, 
really try to kind of angle your arms out, get a nice full range of motion and, and press strong off the bottom. Um, most guys that have big raw benches kind of bench that way anyway. Not most, but a lot. Um, and usually they don't tweak their form till years later till they get into powerlifting, but they usually develop a lot of a lot of trem- they develop a lot of tremendous uh, strength through their pecs and shoulders by uh, benching with that outward elbow angle. Um, so th- hopefully that uh, helps clear up that question for you. Um, and uh, you have another question here. Um, I have trouble grasping the concept of flaring my lats while benching. No trouble squeezing the shoulder blades. Um, okay, and he also mentions that Louis Simmons laughed at him when he asked him for advice because he said it took George Halbert three years to learn it. Um, that, uh, that's not that funny because uh, that is how long it takes to learn that kind of stuff. It's kind of, um, you know, not to get too technical, but it's kind of like motor control, control over your muscles. Um, athletes that come from other sports that are superior um, to uh, regular uh, regular schmoes that uh, that never really made it in, in sports tend to do really well in powerlifting right away because they already have that uh, kinesthetic awareness. They already have uh, the ability to kind of recruit those muscle fibers and kind of turn those things on when they need to. Stan Efforting was a great example of this. Uh, when I was thinking to myself, how do I kick this guy's ass? I would pick something really weird. I, did, I remember doing a safety squat bar squat one day with some bands and some chains. I'm like, he's never done bands. He's never done chains. He's never used a safety squat bar, and he's barely ever done a box squat. It's like, this is going to be great. I'm finally going to kick this guy's ass. And after about the, the first set, he really screwed up, and it looked horrible. He almost fell, and he almost died. Second set, he cleaned it up a little bit. And the third set, he looks at me and he goes, I think I got it figured out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was just like, oh, shit. And so I put my gear on, and even with my gear on, he still whooped my ass. Sad story. Sad but true, like the Metallica song. But, um, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully you can um, hopefully you can kind of grasp the concept of uh, that front bodybuilder pose. You know, the bodybuilders, they do that. We, you, guys, you guys out there do it. I know, I, know, I know that guy over there does it for sure. I know every morning you do that front bodybuilder pose where you flare the, you know, flare the, uh, flare the elbows out and uh, flare the lats out. Um, anybody should be able to kind of do that and once you've uh, trained your lats. If you have some lats, you should be able to do that. But that's really all it is. You're, just, you're, you're flexing your lats and it's kind of automatically shoving your shoulders, you're shoving your shoulders forward and kind of putting you in this plane here. So you're going to tuck the elbows on the way down. If the elbow's never tucked on the way down, and if you never engage the lats from the top of the lift, you're not going to be able to turn them on all of a sudden as you go to press, especially when you're talking about a max weight. It's not going to happen. It's not going to, it doesn't work that way. So you have to have the lats ready to go uh, before you ever start your lift. The way that you have your lats ready to go is you pull the weight out of the rack, and you try to break the barbell, you try to bend the barbell on the way down, you bring the weights down, you settle that weight, settle it into your lats, you hear people say, and then you tuck the elbow in, the elbow's in tight to the body. As you go to press, now I can kind of feel my lat back there shoving against my tricep. I have pretty huge triceps, so that's probably a lot easier for me to feel than some of you guys out there but you're kind of winding up. I've heard Ryan Kennelly say, gather, 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 explode. That's what he's doing. He's gathering strength and then wham, exploding back up. So that's kind of what you're trying to do as you're coming down. You're not really, a lot of people say, pull the bar towards you. I I never really felt that necessarily. Um, Although sometimes you can feel that in your bench shirt. I, I would say you want to pull those weights out like you're doing that old school pullover to expand the rib cage. And uh, you're, you're pulling those weights out. Even with somebody lifting off to you, you want to still try to pull those weights down. Word. You can even do a, a lat pull-down exercise where you stand and you grab the barbell and you do some of these guys here. Some of that might help you uh, kind of visualize that. But it's just that front bodybuilder pose. You're trying to, boom, you're trying to flex those lats out. That's going to help you out of the bottom. You mentioned you have a lot of trouble out of the bottom. And you mentioned that you have no power off your chest. You have no power off your chest because you're not involving, you're not engaging the lats at all. 
I'm not a big fan of some of this terminology because it's too weird for most people to even understand. You talk about using the lats for a bench press. It's just kind of, uh, just kind of awkward. Uh, it doesn't really make any sense to a lot of people. But that, that's what people are talking about when they talk about trying to engage the lats in the bench press. It's really, you're just really flexing your pecs real hard. You're flex, flexing your pecs so hard that your lats are flexing as well is really what's going on. Do some dumbbell presses and press like this hands this way and bring those in tight to your body and every time you push every time you push push yourself through that bench press and flex your lats as hard as you can and you should be really sore almost uh, through the lats and through uh, the rib cage kind of area serratus muscles um, you should feel some soreness through there I think I answered your question if you didn't get it then uh, you're an idiot. <laughs> but uh, that's it from supertraining.tv. That's it from The Power Project. Remember, this message is sponsored by thepowermagazine.com, and this message will self-destruct. See you later.